Hello people, in this video, let us look at some basic larynx MCQs. Superior margin of infant's larynx is at the level of, so they are talking about infant's larynx. So an infant's larynx is at the level of the superior margin. Answer, you have options, cervical spine C1, C2, C4, C6. So what do you want to choose? 1 is 1, 2 is 2, okay, then you have 4 and 6. So, basically the answer here is 2, okay. So, cervical spine C2 is the answer. So, here they are asking the superior margin, isn't it? So, if this is C3, this will be C2. So, they are talking about the superior margin, okay. Basically, you should know that it is higher in an infant, isn't it? For an adult, it seems to be somewhere at C4, isn't it? A neonate, while sucking milk, can respire without difficulty. So, it can easily respire when it is sucking milk also. Why? Because it is breathing via the nose, isn't it? So, why is this? Because of the options for you are, this is for a neonate. So, the options are small, soft palate, high larynx, small tongue, small pharynx. So, we already know the larynx is high. <clears throat> so, this is a true statement. But is this the answer? So, the answer here is the same thing. Yes, high larynx is the answer. So, this helps the baby, the neonate to suck milk and respire without difficulty. Okay. Look at this question now. Again, uh, infant here. The narrowest part of infant's respiratory tract is is it the glottis subglottis none of the above and another thing here is carina so what is the answer the answer is subglottis the answer here the answer is subglottis <clears throat> in infant is a, it is the narrowest part of subglottis in adults it is glottis okay so look at the answer here neonates narrowest part is subglottis in adults the narrowest part is the glottis so, let us exactly understand which part they are talking about. Glottis is here, subglottis is here, isn't it? So, vocal cords, they are talking about glottis right there and below that they are talking about the subglottis, isn't it? So, this is the glottis just by the vocal cords and then you have the subglottis. So, what are they saying is narrow in adults. In adults, it is narrow where? So, in adults, the glottis is narrow. And in neonates, the subglottis is narrow. Okay. Look at this question now. Which of the following muscles is responsible for abduction of vocal cord? So, abduction. Here we are talking about abduction, taking it away. Abduction of vocal cord. So, abduction of vocal cord. Uh, so, here the options are posterior cricoarytenoid, lateral cricoarytenoid, cricoarytenoid and transverse arytenoid. Okay. Here we have the muscles and what they do. Mainly focus on this posterior cricoarytenoid. So, posterior cricoarytenoid, it is this muscle here. Okay. So, this one is the abductor of vocal cord. Okay. So, the answer is posterior cricoarytenoid. Okay. Let's look yet at yet another question. Okay, let's go. External laryngeal nerve is usually injured during. They're talking about the external laryngeal nerve. So, focus here, external. Okay. It is usually injured during. The options are ligation of which artery? Superior thyroid artery, inferior thyroid artery, subclavian artery and facial artery. To me, it seems to be something like, okay, let's see the answer here. The answer is four facial artery. See here, here you have the superior laryngeal nerve. There you have the internal and the external. If you remember in recurrent laryngeal nerve, we have always related that to the thyroid artery, right? But here they are not talking about the recurrent laryngeal nerve. They are talking about the external laryngeal nerve and they are talking about the facial artery. 
So if you see here, here you have the external laryngeal nerve, guys. Here you have the external laryngeal nerve. Again, here in this diagram, you can spot the external laryngeal nerve here. Right? And here, whatever you have, this is the common carotid. And then here you have the branches of which is this? This is the external carotid artery and its branches. So obviously, facial nerve is a facial artery is a branch of external carotid artery, isn't it? So external carotid artery branches, here you have superior thyroid, lingual, facial. So facial artery ligation can affect external laryngeal nerve. Are you ready to look at yet another challenge here? Changing in pitch of sound is produced by which muscle? Changing in pitch of sound, the pitch, they're talking about the pitch here. Which muscle? The options are posterior cricoarytenoids, lateral cricoarytenoids, cricothyroid vocalis. So what is the answer? Answer is 3, cricothyroid. So here they are showing you the cricoid cartilage, thyroid cartilage. Between this you should have the cricothyroid muscle. There are two parts also they are showing, vertical part and oblique part. So this is responsible for what? The pitch. The pitch of the sound. The pitch, the changing in the pitch, not just pitch. The changing in the pitch of the sound is produced by which muscle? Cricothyroid. Okay. Okay, yet another question on larynx. Inlet of the larynx is formed by. Okay, the answer is visible. Wait. True vocal cords, false vocal cords, array epiglottic folds, vocal folds. Inlet of the larynx. Okay. Look at this one here. Array epiglottic fold is here. Then, here they have marked false vocal cords. Then they have marked true vocal cords here. Okay. So, what else? What are the, what is the other option? The answer. True vocal cords, false vocal cords, array epiglottic folds, vocal folds. Okay. Vocal cords, vocal. Okay. So, here the answer is array epiglottic folds. Okay. Let's look at the answer. Three. Let us look at yet another question. False about unilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy. They are talking about recurrent laryngeal nerve. And it's only unilateral. And they are asking for the false statement here. So three statements are correct. It is a unilateral nerve palsy. So only one side. So um, speech may not be affected that much. What do you say? Uh, conservative management sounds about right. It's a unilateral thing. Main thing here is it is unilateral. So may not affect voice that much. What do you say? False statement they want to know. The answer is three. Difficulty in breathing. So false about unilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy. Difficulty in breathing. So this is a false statement. In recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy, voice is affected. Breathing is not affected, looks like. Another related question, look at this. High risk of aspiration is high in. Sorry, risk of aspiration is high in. So, risk of aspiration is high in unilateral, bilateral, bilateral something. So, unilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy, we saw that there is a risk of Aspiration, isn't it? Just now they said it is there, right? Bilateral, okay, it is high. They are asking in which is it high? It should be more. The risk of aspiration, most among these two. Unilateral, bilateral, obviously bilateral could be much significant. So this one we will remove. This one cannot be the answer, isn't it? Unilateral. Then adductor. Adductor. We usually are more concerned with abductor. Bilateral complete palsy. This sounds like a scary thing, isn't it? Bilateral complete palsy. Let's look at the answer here. Answer is 4. Bilateral complete palsy is the answer. Risk of aspiration is high. 
some kind of a related question here bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy is seen in bilateral palsy has occurred thyroidectomy you try to remove the thyroid right carcinoma thyroid cancer cervical esophagus all of the above bilateral bilateral let's look at the answer answer is four all of the above Okay, one more question here, guys. Larynx anatomy. All are elevators of the larynx except thyrohyoid, digastric, stylohyoid, sternohyoid. Let's try to imagine this. This is one guy here. Okay, his nose and his mouth and his. Okay. So, thyrohyoid. Let's see, this is the hyoid bone. Thyrohyoid, digastric. Stylohyoid, sternohyoid, sternohyoid, everything attached to the hyoid. We seem to be very concerned about hyoid here. Hyoid, 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 thyrohyoid, stylohyoid, sternohyoid. Digastric is this muscle kind of, you know, hangs here and here, right? That's digastric. What about sternohyoid? Sternohyoid is, um, this one, long muscle, thin, narrow, long muscle. Here they are showing you stylohyoid. Here they are showing you the thyrohyoid muscle. So, what do you think the answer is here? Thyroid, digastric, stylohyoid. And they seem to be telling that sternohyoid is not an elevator of the larynx. So, here... It's an except question. Three things are correct. So all the other things elevate the larynx except sternohyoid. So elevators, primary elevators they are talking about, they are attached to the thyroid cartilage. So they are uh, having thyrohyoid here definitely. Secondary are attached to the hyoid bone. So if they are attached to the hyoid bone, there you will have stylohyoid. And digastric, they are saying. Mylohyoid is main. So, stylopharyngeus, salpingopharyngeus, palatopharyngeus, and thyrohyoid. These are the primary elevators. Secondary elevators, they act indirectly. They are attached to the hyoid bone. You have mylohyoid, digastric, stylohyoid, and genohyoid. Depressors. Depressors, you have the sternohyoid. So, depressor, it was sternohyoid. Sternothyroid, omohyoid. Anything to do with the sternum. So, that is not pulling it down. Depressors, they are. Okay. Just another question here. Elastic cartilage is seen in. Thyroid cartilage, definitely, I don't think it is elastic and all that. Cricoid also, it doesn't seem elastic to me. Aretinoid. Epiglottis. What do you think? The answer is epiglottis. It is very flexible. It's elastic, isn't it? So if you remember <clears throat> in larynx cartilages, we have studied what in all are the cartilages? Thyroid. <clears throat> here you have the epiglottis. Cricoid. And here they have shown aretinoid. Then you have two more here. Cuneiform and corniculate, right? So, what else? What should you tell here? Unpaired, you have epiglottis, thyroid and cricoid. In that epiglottis is the one that is elastic. Then you have the paired ones, aretinoid, cuneiform, corniculate. In that, again, cuneiform, corniculate are elastic. So, the elastic cartilage is which is present. Where is it present? It is present in epiglottis. Okay, mainly you remember this. Last, last, really last question now. Sensory supply of vocal cords is sensory. We are talking about the sensory supply. Sensory supply of vocal cords is answer, options are internal laryngeal nerve, recurrent laryngeal nerve, superior laryngeal nerve, all of the above. What is the answer? The answer is all of the above. Interesting. So, let us read about this sensory supply of vocal cords. So, basically, 
We have already seen this in the recurrent laryngeal nerve video. Since recurrent laryngeal nerve gives motor supply and sensory supply. Okay, motor to almost everything except the cricothyroid, isn't it? And uh, sensory to all which are, which are below the vocal cords. Internal and superior. Superior itself becomes internal and external, isn't it? So you have seen that. You can see here, superior is here. That itself is becoming internal and external. So when it says vocal cords above something else and below something else it is. Okay. So you will have to say below what it is. It is recurrent laryngeal nerve. Above it will be internal laryngeal nerve which is nothing but the superior laryngeal nerves branch. So all of the above. So those were the questions on larynx anatomy. That's all for now. Bye-bye.